examination centers at the secondary school certificate where the government provided the requirements for success for this process. Residents of Homs and its countryside celebrate the victory of the Syrian Arab army in all say of asserting determination to eliminate terrorism. Syrian, Algerian, Tunisian, French and Turkish citizens organize a protest demonstration near the Turkish embassy in Paris against Erdogan's support of terrorism in Syria. Tens of thousands of Turkish citizens continue their demonstrations against Erdogan's government in several Turkish towns for the 10th day. Good afternoon, welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. Prime Minister Dr. Wael Halaki toured the examination centers of the secondary school certificates. In the school of Moaz bin Jabal in Damascus, he asserted that the examinations were running smoothly because the government provided all the requirements for success of the pro process. In the shelter of temporary residents of the displaced people in El Mezze, he pointed out that the government decided to increase the financial allocations for the subsidiary committees in order to enable them to procure the basic materials of the necessary supplies. With the participation of the Syrian community in Paris, along with Algerian, Tunisian and French citizens, in cooperation with the members of the Turkish Youth Gathering in France, a protest was held in front of the Turkish Embassy in Paris to condemn the policies of Erdogan, which support terrorism against Syria and the region. The former Austrian defense minister, Gontar Plata, strongly criticized the sudden resolution of the government to withdraw its active battalion operating in the UN separation forces in the Syrian Golan. He considered such resolutions taken just for a sense of danger, a mistaken act. He called upon his current successor to reconsider this act and to work in a spirit of solidarity with the international community. He also pointed out that the Austrian forces were of a high standard and capable of staying in the Golan. President Vladimir Putin of Russia expressed readiness to send Russian forces to replace the Austrian forces if the UN asked for this action. Earlier, Russia renewed its willingness to send Russian forces to replace the Austrian forces in the UN forces of separation that occupied Syrian Golan, which Austria announced its decision to withdraw them two days ago. The Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov asserted that if the UN remained worried about the situation in the Golan, the Russian forces would be the suitable solution. He added that there was no need to refer to all the restrictions that prevented the deployment of forces from the permanent members of the UN Security Council. He asserted that the consolidation of peace and stability required a different type of political thinking. This issue belongs to the UN Security Council. Thousands of residents of Homs and its countryside went out into the streets in a march to celebrate victory achieved by the Syrian Arab army against the terrorists in Qusayr. The demonstrators expressed their support for the Syrian Arab army in its fight against terrorism. They shouted slogans calling for the army to continue chasing the terrorists on all parts of the country. Units of the Syrian army restored security and stability to the village of eastern Waida in Al-Qusayr countryside in Homs after putting an end to the last terrorist group there. Large numbers of terrorists were killed and wounded with the destruction of their weapons and diffusing scores of explosive devices inside the village. The army continued its work to remove the remains of destruction and roadblocks erected by the terrorists, while the engineering units continued to diffuse their explosive devices near the houses of innocent citizens. A Syrian Arab army unit also restored security and stability to the villages of al Mas'udiya and al Salihiyah in al Qusayr countryside. Inside Luxir, the people from the town and its countryside met officials in the governorate in a large popular gathering to assert commitment to national unity and to consider the requirements of restoring normal life after our valiant armed forces got rid of the mercenary terrorist gangs.
In the Damascus countryside, a Syrian Arab army unit clashed with the terrorists to the entry of Al Hamidiyah in the eastern Ghouta, killing and wounding large numbers of them and destroying their weapons. A Syrian Arab army unit also diffused explosive devices planted by the terrorists on the major road leading to this town. They also removed dust roadblocks erected by the terrorists. In the farms of Al-Ibn Duma, a valiant army destroyed a workshop to make explosive devices and weapons and equipment, including a heavy machine gun. Among the dead terrorists were Muhammad Muhyiddin and Muhammad Hanan. The army also clashed with terrorists in Al-Rahiba, killing and wounding several of them and confiscated a number of anti-armor rockets. In the town of Hujaira, the army destroyed weapons and killed and wounded many terrorists, including Adnan Yusuf Diab, Al Zubaydi, and Qasim Ayyub. The army also killed and wounded many terrorists in one of the farms of Khan al Sheikh, including Abdullah al Shamali. In Idlib, a Syrian Arab army unit foiled a terrorist attack on a military site in the countryside of Jisr al Shahur, killing and wounding many terrorists. In the town of Al Rami, a valiant armed forces killed and wounded several terrorists, destroying their weapons. They also killed and wounded members of terrorist gangs in several other villages nearby. They destroyed terrorist hideouts in Sermin and several other sites in Marit and Norman. The army also clashed with the terrorist gang of bandits along the highway of Sadaq and Aleppo, killing and wounding most of them. A military source said that a Syrian Arab army unit foiled an attempt of a terrorist gang to infiltrate into Syria from Turkey across the village of Nebil Moor in the Latakia countryside, inflicting casualties among the terrorists. The weapons and ammunition of the terrorists were also destroyed, including a vehicle carrying a heavy machine gun and large numbers of various machine guns. Terrorist gangs detonated a booby-trapped car in a garage in Khan Adnaba in the governorate of al Qunaitra, where several innocent civilian, civilians were wounded. Many workshops were heavily damaged when another explosive device was detonated, causing material damage in shops and houses. The engineering units diffused another device before its explosion. At least seven people were killed and 18 others were injured in a terrorist blast carried out in Al-Khazimiya of the capital of Baghdad. Meanwhile, Iraqi army, the Iraqi army foiled a terrorist scheme to cut the international road linking Baghdad and Iran, arresting 125 people during a series of operations against Al-Qaeda Haidites in several governorates. The Iraqi army carried out wide-scale security operations that included the mountains of Hamrin between Diyala and Kirkuk. The operations resulted in the killing of a number of terrorists, foiling their scheme to blow off the international road between Baghdad and Iran, or, and the two erect blockades kidnap and kill the travelers on that road. The rest of the terrorists ran away to hide in mountain caves. Tens of thousands of Turkish demonstrators continued their protests against Prime Minister Leader of Justice and Development Party, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The protests erupted 10 days ago in several Turkish cities against the project to change the features of Taksim Square in Istanbul. In New York, hundreds of people demonstrated in Zakuti Square, raising the Turkish flag to show solidarity with the Turkish demonstrators, calling for the toppling of Erdogan and his government. Earlier, Turkish police had fired tear gas and used water cannons to disperse thousands of demonstrators in the capital Ankara on the ninth day of protests against Erdogan's government, while the media reported that a number of protesters were injured during the demonstrations. Leader of the Turkish Republican Party, Kemal Klitish Dara Oglu, asserted that the protest is a decision taken by the Turkish youth and they are the ones who will decide whether to end it or not. For more details, you can visit our website, syrianline.sy. Before I uh, move on to our economic news, over to Vani, I say God bless you and long live Syria.